Oh, yeah. Here we go, folks. Uh, I know today is Tuesday, and I usually do a talk about gear live stream, but I'm doing a makeup stream for the month of March and the Headrush HTS rigs. So if you have a Headrush unit, then go ahead and grab it and follow along. And if you want to help support the channel, then uh, purchase the HTS rigs course from my website. And that gives you instant download for all the rigs I've made in the last two or three years at this point. And uh, yeah, so we're going to have fun talking about the Fender Twin Amplifier. And uh, I'm trying to get this angle on here so you can still see my face and the guitar at the same time. Maybe if you care. I don't know. And I am using the Orion. What is this thing? Yeah. This is the Synergy Core Orion Studio. Or maybe it's called Orion Studio Synergy Core. I don't know. Whatever it is. It's by Antelope Audio. And it's a very cool unit. Uh, I've tried PreSonus over the years. RME off and on the last few years. Um, but I'm very interested in the internal plugins that this, that this unit has. So right now I'm technically going through... What am I going through? I'm going through a mic preamp. Sorry, I'm going through a, a Harrison 32 CEQ on my voice. And I'm also going through a SSL Comp 4K bus, which is adding just a little bit of compression to my voice as I talk. Um, there looks like to be a mic pre on, which I can turn that on here. And maybe it uh, accentuates my voice a little bit. I can turn it back off. I'll leave it off for now. I'm just going to deal with a little bit of EQ and compression on the way in. And last night I was playing the Headrush Core and adding a Distressor plug-in to the back end. Kind of give it some gel and some cool, like, you know, cool sound. So, uh, yeah, it's all good. It's all very neat. Uh, this is the Kiesel Os Osiris. It's a headless model. And it's seven strings. And it's fanned frets, which means the scale is longer on the bottom than it is on the top. Yes, this is the bottom because this is a lower pitch. This is the top because it's a higher pitch. So, that's how that works. And over to my right, you see the headrest core. Here is my hand Ooh, going over to the screen. And I have made a set list called Big Twin March HTS Rigs. So everything I make tonight will be available on the website. And you can go download it uh, after you purchase um, the course. Or if you already... If you've already purchased the course, then you just go in and download it and be good to go. Uh, but that means that next week I will do another HTS rigs for this month because last month was busy. And honestly, basketball. I'm just going to blame it on basketball. And uh, I watched all the games, or at least as much as I could, and just soaked it all in. And I loved every minute of it. And I actually watched women's basketball for probably the first time ever. Because um, there's actually people that can play now that actually know how to make a layup. Uh, <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's true. Uh, I always try to watch basketball or women's basketball in the past. And after five minutes, I just turn it off because they just keep missing easy shots. You know, walking, double dribbling. They're not like the high level of basketball that I expect to watch if it's if it's televised in any in any way um it just wasn't there it wasn't to that high level that i preferred to see so uh but this year uh thanks to uh a lot of a lot of great players both men and women uh, i was very entertained for the month of march and uh the very beginning of april because march madness or the ncaa tournament ended 
technically in April. So anyway, there you go. Uh, the last week I have used my own IRs, uh, which if you are, um, uh, if you like IRs and you want to check out some really, really good ones, Greg Barth over at Sonic DNA is having a happy birthday sale. I think he's given 60% off. Uh, so go check out my pack, the Doc McFarland IR pack from Sonic DNA. It essentially gives you a 2x12 cab with a Vintage 30 and a greenback. And it has three different microphone types. And it gives you the ability to balance uh, the microphones, either the same volume, one halfway down, or all the way down. Then it does the opposite side. It does all the way up again. And then does the left side halfway down and then all the way down. So it gives you different combinations of microphones. And it also gives you on and off axis options. And they just sound really good. So uh, Greg did a great job with those. And I am uh, I use them. Pretty much that's all I use. These, the only IRs, when I do use them, I use my own because they sound really, really good. So if you want to help support the channel, uh, you will see Doc McFarland IR pack. Uh, from Sonic DNA in all my video descriptions. Uh, so just find any of my videos uh, because I've updated all of them at this point and you'll see the Sonic DNA Doc McFarland IR pack. So uh, thank you for your support on that. And I'm sure Greg supports uh, that recommendation as well uh, since he's the guy that made it and uh, I'm the artist that endorses it. So uh, but for the sake of uh, continuity, not continuity, for the sake of uh, everyone being on the same playing field, we are going to use stock I or uh, stock cabs. Um, there are there are stock IRs that come in the headrush, even the legacy units. I call them legacy units now. Uh, but we can explore some of those, and there's even some good ones in the revolver uh, collection. But if I'm making rigs for both the legacy unit and the new core and prime, I kind of need kind of I kind of need to keep it um, accessible for everybody, uh, or at least you know till everyone has a core or a prime and no longer has the older unit. But that's not going to be for a very long time. So anyway, I'll stop jabbering, and you can see my screen right here. So we're going to just touch a block. And um, I did notice today that the FM3 from Fractal uh, got a new update. They've incorporated the gapless switching that was started in the Axe FX and the FM9. And now it's in the, FM, and now it's in the FM3, which I had an FM3. And I've actually bought one twice now. What was it three times? I think I bought it three times. I bought the first one. And then sent it back because I realized, eh, I'm not really too fond of it. I didn't like the limitations of it. And then I bought a second one. Kept that for a little bit longer. But then I ended up selling it on Marketplace. Uh, probably lost like 200 bucks off of that deal. Uh, which it is what it is. And then, um, no, that wasn't the recent one. That was the, uh, the other one. I sold the other one somewhere. And then... Uh, the third one, I was like, right, I'm, I'm really going to keep the FM3 this time because it was like the turbo and it had the bigger screen, those scribble strips. And I still was like, you know what? Even with the gapless switching, I'm just not fond of the workflow and all the things that you have to do just to make a basic rig. So let's, let's make a rig right now. Let's start over here. So when you turn on the Headrush Core or the Prime or the Gig Board or the Pedal Board or the MX-5, you are presented with a blank screen, okay? And if you're watching, be sure to uh, uh, leave a name and, and uh, where you're from and which Headrush do you have because uh, I'd be interested to know what you have there, okay? All right, so... When you have a blank screen here, all you have to do is if you're on the legacy unit, you have 11 blocks. If you're on the headrush core or the prime, you have 14 blocks. Okay. Now, because of that, and I already know that I want to have uh, my amp and cab kind of in the middle 
and then my reverb and delay effects toward the end, and then my drives and filters and wah wahs and stuff like that toward the front. So I'm not going to choose the first block and then add an amp there because, I mean, I technically could, but then I just have to move it anyway. Uh, but let's just go ahead and do that just for fun. So we're going to go to amp. And we're going to go to head rush. And we're going to scroll down till we see the black duo. The 67 black duo, which is the Fender, the black face Fender twin. Okay. And if we play something, this is what we have. It's actually not too bad. Usually when you get a little bit of dirt on the signal, you now have the sound of, I call it the swarm of bees kind of sound, where it's just kind of buzzy and fizzy and fuzzy and weird stuff going on. You can kind of hear it right there. So it's just not, a, when you don't have a cab in the signal path, that's the kind of sound you're going to get. Okay, so now we're going to go hit the plus, go to cab IR, go to head rush. We're going to go to head rush, head rush cab. And we're going to go down and find the 2x12 black duo cab. So this is the cab that usually comes stock with the head. Okay, now you hear all that nice bass kind of roll in there and you got some kind of some scoopy mids going on uh some nice jangle in the top end okay now from here the vast majority of your guitar sound is going to be the the speaker type and the microphone type that you're going to choose in the modeler so at this point the the condenser 414 it's sounding a little thin to me. Let's go with the Royer 121. Okay, and since this is a unit that is really meant to mimic the recorded sound or a sound that has a microphone in front of it, um, we can do some EQ after the fact that helps us along to get a more studio sound. Otherwise, you can just bypass the cab or IR in the rig and then go through a power amp or an effects return of an amplifier. And then that should provide you with a power amp sound and a speaker sound because if you have a combo amp, you already have a speaker sound because the physical speaker is providing the speaker sound that you need to complete the, the signal chain of a guitar rig. All you have to have is a preamp, a power amp, and a speaker and then from there, you're either standing in the room and your ears are picking it up, or you put a mic in front of it, and now you're listening with headphones, uh, in-ears, or maybe a floor wedge coming off the stage, or maybe studio monitors, or whatever kind of speaker system or playback system that you have to actually monitor the sound that you're using. So, okay. <laughs> And the Black Duo, I mean, any Fender amp is just going to give you a very scoopy kind of sound. So I wouldn't expect this sound to have a lot of mid-range to it. Okay, we can turn the brightness off. So there's also another thing with the EQ circuit on most, amp, most amps out there is when you boost the lows and the highs, you naturally get a scoopier kind of mid-range. But when you turn down the highs and the lows, you get more mid-range. So it's just, if I could draw a diagram, I would, but um, that's just kind of how it works. We do have a vibrato on this amplifier, which is nice. And we can turn down the intensity. And also the speed just slightly here. So for example, we're going to turn down the bass and turn down the treble. This does have a mid knob on it. Which if I jacked it all the way up. Okay, so that gives us a pretty nice sound. It's not overly bright.
And you can see I have the volume at 57%. It can be 50%, it could be 60, somewhere in there. Um, Fender twin amplifiers have a very high headroom, which means you really have to crank them up pretty loud to get any kind of distortion out of them, uh, which also means that you can keep them around the 3 or 4% area or on the dial and just have a low volume, very squeaky clean type sound, which is great for country guys or, um, you know, pop or funk or whatever. And it also makes some really good pedal flip, uh, pedal platforms as well because they do have some nice headroom to them. Okay, at this point, I have made my tone and now I need to go to the output section and make sure I'm getting into volume out of the rig. So from here, we're gonna click on the last area, which is output, and then just play. And that's actually pretty good. I'm gonna try and get a little closer to that zero mark. So I'm gonna tap on the rig volume and start bumping it up about three dB or so. Okay. So you can see I'm really digging in. And like a good tube amp, uh, the tubes are going to compress at a certain volume. So therefore, that's why even in modeling, when you play hard on the strings, you're really not going to get more volume out of it. It's just going to start compressing. Um, all right, so we're going to keep this pretty clean here. And I'm fairly happy with everything that we have so far. Maybe add a little bit more brightness. Here's the uh, neck pickup on the Osiris. Okay. All right, so now we have the amp and cab right at the beginning of the chain but we may want to add some dirt and some maybe phase or flange or a wah pedal, filter effect, whatever we want. So because of that, I am going to slide this down to the second row. Now to my knowledge, it really doesn't matter where in the path you put the block like as far as CPU goes, it's really, it's not taxing to have an open block somewhere. Um, they say on the fractal unit, it, the more shunts you have, the more DSP is technically taking up. Maybe, I mean, it's not that much, maybe, you know, a few percent, but a few percent can be a lot when you already have, you know, a maxed out preset and you need some extra, you know, that last few percentage of DSP to do what you want. So, but on the headrest, you don't really have to deal with that. So, all right, I like to have a little bit of compression on the way in. So let's do our, um, we got a dot comp here. And I know we don't have a gain reduction meter, but we can turn it off. Okay, so that's getting a little squishier sounding. Back to bridge. And then at the very end, we will do some reverb. We'll do a good old spring reverb here. Bright and tight. And we'll turn the mix down. Okay. 
Okay, I always prefer to have the tails on my delay and reverb. So when I bypass the effect, the effect keeps going or spills over. So that's really what it is. Uh, snake pools in the house. What exactly is the alternate output? Uh, it's funny when I first got my uh, the very first head rush many 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 years ago, probably back in twenty probably late twenty seventeen early twenty eighteen somewhere in there. On the pedal board, which they did not have this on the gig board or the MX five because there was only um, there was only quarter inch outputs on the gig board and MX five, but the pedal board had a XLR and a quarter inch and you can differ differentiate between them. So real fast, if we go back here and go to our global setting and then click on audio, um, it's going to be a similar area for you if you're on the legacy units. Um, but essentially what you're saying is this, we want our guitar input to be, you know, it can be guitar or it can be effects return left or it can be per rig, which means, I can change it per rig if I want. So I just keep it on per rig. Uh, but right now it's set the guitar. And then my guitar out can either be XLR or quarter inch or phones, or I can just turn them all off. So I, if I de, de uh, engage the XLR, you can hear I have no guitar signal anymore because I have disengaged it. If I bring it back in, Okay, so that's all well and good. The alt guitar source is telling you that uh, you can have an alternate output anywhere in your chain, okay? So what's happening here is if I have it be rig input, then essentially I can send uh, my dry guitar signal up into the first rig input and then it's going to stop there and it's going to bypass everything in the rig. So I don't have a quarter inch output right now, but I will, I'm pretty sure I have a video on this uh, late last year sometime. But yes, rig input, you're essentially going to go input and then it's going to, the signal is going to stop. And it's going to send a dry signal out of the whatever you choose. So you can have it be, since I have the XLR going to the guitar out, the alt guitar out can be quarter inch. So therefore, I can send XLR to the front of house. Then I can send a, uh, a signal out of the quarter inch output to an amplifier, for instance, or effects return or just some other source that I want to send something out to. Okay. Uh, the, the vast majority of times, since I'm using uh, either a cab or an, or an IR, I'm going to set this to... I'm going to set this to Headrush Cab Input. And what that means is this. If I go back to my rig. If I have it set to the cab input, that means I'm going to send the full signal coming through till it hits that cab input and then it's gonna stop. And it's not gonna uh, output anything else after that, okay? So if you had like delays and reverbs and stuff, um, which I can actually do this right now. Let me add in some, uh, some delay, some dying delay. And then I'll add in a very long reverb just so you can uh, actually do a divine hall, that's, that's fine. Turn my mix down. Okay. Going back to my global settings here, audio. If I now set this to, let me take my guitar out there. If I now set the guitar, all guitar out to XLR. Okay, notice that none of my reverb or delay are being heard out of that output because I have stopped the output 
at the at the cab input right there. So now if I move the cab input after everything, like so, guess what? Now you hear all the effects because I've told I've told that guitar output or the all guitar output to go up into the go through the signal till it hits the cab input and then it's going to break the chain there and bypass the cab, essentially bypass the cab input and everything after it. So if I moved it after this reverb, for instance, okay, no more spring reverb. If I move it after the hall, okay, no more party verb. If I move it before the uh, delay, I get no delay. So um, that allows you to have like a, like a wet dry rig if you kind of like that sound. You can do a wet dry thing, uh, which is really neat. Um, because one output can send the full signal and then the all guitar output can send everything but, you know, delay, reverb, cab, whatever you want. So I uh, hope that makes sense. And it's actually, uh, it's actually pretty easy. And just for that reason, I will go ahead and put the cab at the end. Um, but I will not have the guitar source be an XLR. I'll have it just uh, go out of nothing right now. Okay. And we'll turn all this other stuff off. Let's bring that back. Okay, so now you see I have a compressor, a amp, head in the middle my cab is at the end in case you want to do an alt guitar source thing then i have some wet effects in between okay i'm going to go ahead and bring in something that i probably should have tried a long time ago and this is the s1 drive and my goodness i have really fallen in love with this one <laughs> I mean, to me, that just sounds great. Uh, let me check the rest of these comments here. He's on a prime. And yeah. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you have any more questions. I can definitely address them. Okay, sounds good to me. We'll do another pedal, another pedal here. I really like just having the green JRC um, that works for me. Drive down, volume all the way up. It always defaults to yellow, and I've saved presets that tell it to be green, and it still just goes back to yellow. So it's a bug that I either need to uh, tell them, or they just need to address it somehow. So uh, we're going to call this uh, BT for Big Twin. Big Ten Clean. Pedals. Uh, March. HTS. Oh, I just made it. Had a very long name there. Okay, it's always uh, when you engage a, a drive pedal, you always want to bypass it and make sure the level is roughly the same. If not, maybe just a little bit higher. So. for me let's check the s s1 drive cool uh let's bring the level down the smidge bring the drive down bring the tone up and 
Now, I'm okay with the drive being down because you can always kick in the tube screamer. And get more dirt that way. Otherwise, you just have a nice low gain kind of... But you could crank the drive a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure about the an update. I know there's a beta, but I'm not sure when it's going to be a release. So whenever everything is worthy of being released, then they'll release it. So And honestly, at this point, I... I couldn't care less about um, adding more amps and more effects and stuff. I want more uh, quality of life kind of updates. Um, and, I, and I'll give you an example right here. So if I go to this Fender Twin and I choose to save it, okay, I can save as a new preset. And I'm not saving the actual rig itself. I'm just changing the block preset, okay? So we're gonna call this dock twin clean, okay? Dock, twi dock twin clean. Now at this point, I'm gonna crank the snot out of this amp. <laughs> Okay, and you'll notice that that's pretty cool, actually. Uh, let's crank the treble. We'll bring down the bass. Uh, that's pretty good. Pretty good little drive sound. Let's check the output. Now notice that my green LEDs are hitting right the same zero mark as when I had it set to clean because a good tube amp is going to compress the more you drive it. So at a certain point you will get a volume boost, but after that it kind of levels off because of all the compression and the power amp tubes and all that stuff. So. I use the effects loop for my drive pedals. The effects loop before the amp causes a hiss. So I have to put a noise filter after the effects block. Uh, that's interesting. I don't know why it'd be causing a hiss. Uh, unless it's doing some kind of 60 cycle home thing. Or maybe it's just a hiss. Or maybe you need to turn down... Maybe uh, maybe turn down the either the send level or the return level. Um, I don't know. It's that's interesting. Okay, so we're nice and compressed there, and I'm gonna double tap on the amp block and go ahead and save it again. We're going to call this dock. I can spell dock twin uh, CR for like crunch. Okay. And now through the magic of scenes, we can do something like this. So tap on. Uh, Tap on this little switch icon up here, and that goes into your hardware sign. We're gonna click on amp and toggle and switch it from toggle to scene. Now you can't have the hold function on the core, the gig board, or the MX-5 because these have secondary functions. And when you hold it, 
it thinks, hey, I'm, I'm holding it for the secondary function, but in reality, you would want it for a hold function, um, which is why you can do that on the pedal board and the prime because the prime has enough switches to where they don't have to do double duty, and therefore, you can actually have a true hold function uh, for those switches. So that's the way it is. Uh, but what we're going to do is go into edit. We do have two scenes or two scene modes per switch. And you can see down here that we have a preset area on the board itself. Okay. We have a preset area. So what that means is I can click on preset, go to the bottom where all my presets are. And we're going to call it dock twin clean. Okay. And then I can go to the plus symbol, or not plus symbol, but the number two. Scroll down till I find my dock twin CR for crunch. We are going to turn this on. Uh, my delay is going to be off. My party verb is going to be off. My spring reverb is going to be on. My cab is going to be on. My drive is going to be off. Green JRC is going to be off. And my comp is... Actually, let's have this one be... The comp is going to be on on that one. But when I go over to my second scene, the comp is going to be off. Because I don't want any compression um, holding it back. Pretty much on, on. Okay, so now we can save this. Right, we're saved. You can see my scene six turning on and off. You can also see the amplifier kind of flickering a little bit. Now, here is my big beef with Head Rush and a feature that I really, really, truly think that they need to add. Now, especially now that the Tomaster Pro is out with gapless switching, uh, Helix has some sort of, well, Helix doesn't do it. Um, but really, Tomaster Pro has zero gap when you switch between presets and also between uh, you know, internal switching of the preset within the preset and uh, but really fractal is the big guy that has this feature that I think headrest court could implement. And it's the fact that fractal has channels in the same block. And it's essentially the same kind of deal here to where you do have the, the little preset block that you can choose uh, within the amp block or the drive block or any other block. And It'd be so, so cool if we could just go in and have one block per preset or per rig, sorry, and then just go choose a different amp preset to switch to from like one scene to the next. So maybe scene one could be my Fender Twin, and then scene two can be a Bogner uh, Ecstasy, you know, which is in here. Um, but I don't have to add a second amp block just to get that. I can just add the preset in there and then have gapless switching when I switch from scene to scene. Uh, but as of right now, when you change the block preset, it reinstantiates that block and you get a small gap in the sound. And I am very sad about that. So... <laughs> Yeah, Steve is correct. Uh, is there is a hold function as well, but you're really talking about the momentary versus latch uh, option um, 
on the on the switch so yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean man all right now since there is a volume discrepancy let me actually name these here uh actually let me do this we're gonna go to here and call this uh amp amp xy and we are going to change the color. Let's go from blue to red. Okay, save, save. Checking our output. Okay, we're pretty low right there. All right, so what we're going to have to do now, which is my second feature request that I really hope they implement in the next five years. Who knows when it's going to happen? But really, the Helix and the Fractal, uh, Tone Master Pro, uh, what else has this? Um, the Quad Cortex has this. And the Kemper has this. They all have separate volume parameters apart from the actual preamp gain and the master volume of the amplifier. And what that provides you is you can now get the, you could be able to get the tone you like and then just move the amp volume up and down accordingly without having to touch the output volume to, you know, level match everything. So um, I really, really hope that they can come out with that Cause that's really just a very small, uh, it sounds like a small feature, but when you see it on literally every other modeler out there, but the head rush, it's like, come on guys, come on. This is, this is 2024. <laughs> All right. So with that said, I am going to do this. I'm going to add a graphic EQ afterwards. And this does a few things. This allows you to shape the EQ of the sound after the amp, and it also allows you to boost the volume of the amp. So I'm going to raise my volume about four dB or so. I'm also going to push some low mids. Maybe. Raise the volume back down or lower the volume. Okay, bypass it. See, it's very scoopy right now. And when I engage that EQ, I'm able to kind of bring in some of those mids and also raise the volume a little bit. And that's also raising the volume after the amp, which means I don't have to crank the amp to get more volume and then therefore introduce uh, any kind of power amp distortion uh, prematurely that I don't necessarily want. So uh, I'll actually roll off a, a little bit of the low end there. And that works for me. I can also save this preset. We'll call it a dock. Uh, twin EQ something like that okay now we go back to our scene and on scene 1 I want this EQ to be on but on scene 2 I want it to be off okay see that now we still have the issue of uh, the, the switch the, the gap in the switching <laughs> That sounds nice. All right. Now at this point, there's one more thing I can do and it's going to be able, it's going to allow me to, um, 
you can have a two amp blocks in one signal chain, by the way. It can either be two head rush, two revolver, or either or, but you can't have more than that. You can't have two head rush than one revolver or any other combination more than two. You have to have at least two, one of the head rush, one of the revolver, or two of each, okay? So I am going to go back in here and choose the uh, the Black Duo amp. I'm going to bypass this one. And for my preset, I'm going to go down here and choose the Doc Twin Crunch. Save it. Okay, go into Hardware Assign, Edit. So now you see amp one is on. I'm gonna turn amp two off. And then for my second state, I'm gonna have amp one off and then amp two on. Then my EQ should still be the same and everything else should still be the same, okay? So now I'm gonna have zero gap in my sound because I'm switching between two different amplifiers. Okay, and I am turning on a graphic EQ. So here's the clean. Okay, a little, very small, minute gap, not, not horrible. That's probably just me, my, my hand not switching it fast enough, but. So there is a, a clean twin with a cranked twin in the same rig. And you can still, you're still able to, uh, let's do this. Let's add the green JRC, the S1 drive, my delay. So now we have some, some pedals assigned to the switches down here. In order for me to do that on the fractal, that would have took like, 20 minutes it would have been stupid the amount of time it takes to just to do very simple things um so honestly at this point uh i still have the axe fx3 and an fc12 foot switch uh, mainly for like research purposes and stuff but as soon as i can sell that those two items off uh i'll definitely do it i do have them up for sale on marketplace so if anyone's out there watching they, they want a, a slightly used Axe FX Mark I and um, FC12 Mark II foot pedal over the bigger uh, scribble strips. Let me know because uh, I do have those for sale. Because um, really at this point, the head rush does a great job for what I need here in the studio. And I don't play out. I only play at church once or twice a month. So it's like, you know, I don't, I don't need anything else really. Uh, but I do enjoy the Tomaster Pro, and I do enjoy the Helix, or the Line 6 products. I have the Stomp XL. I also have the full Helix Floor, which are great units. And, uh, yeah, I like it. Check the comments here. Let's check the comments here. Okay. Uh, kinda. He's talking about the hold function here. I want this to be up here. Uh, I have a ain't talking about love rig, and that's how the flanger is set. Yep, I know what you mean. 
One thing I really wish they'd do is make the looper and tuner switch assignable to blocks as well. I don't use either, so it's a waste of space. Uh, you don't use a tuner. Okay. Maybe you have a separate headstock tuner, or maybe you have a external tuner. I don't know, but... <laughs> Really, the fractal is the only one that's going to allow you to really reassign every single option on their unit. The helix doesn't allow you to do that. The head rush doesn't allow you to do that. Quad cortex, um, Kemper. Kemper, ha Kemper already has a tuner uh, switch on there that's not even part of the, the main workflow. So... Um, Really, Fractal is the only, only guy in town that allows you to do that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe Boss, Boss GT something or other allows you to do that. But um, really, what you get with Fractal is the most amount of options that you'd ever want. And then everything else below that is just, you know... They're having to compromise because of price or features or ease of use or whatever else. So uh, with Fractal, it is harder. It's hard to get your head wrapped around uh, versus the head rush. I mean, I could give this to my seven-year-old and she could make a rig in like just a matter of minutes and not have to crack a manual, right? But for the Fractal units, you... Uh, you definitely need to invest some time into learning how to use the units itself. Uh, the tune, yeah, I, I've the tuner is fine for me on the on the head rush, and actually, this guitar is kind of hard to tune, anyway. I've always had no issues with the head rush tuner. It has worked for me. But another thing that's really interesting about this, this guitar is it does have a trim system on it, but the, the, the tuners are down here as well. So when you actually turn the, the pot, uh, you're actually pushing down on it. So you kind of have to turn it, then strike the string again, make sure it's where it needs to be. Then, you know, do that kind of song and dance. See that when I push down, it it actually makes it go out of tune. Low B. Low B. So now I'm a little sharp. Yeah, I've always been fine with the tuner, so. Okay, another thing you can do is in these rigs, we can have the we can have these pedals set the no change, which means that if we have it on during a certain scene, it'll stay on, which I need to do that for both. Hold on, let me do it for both. No change, no change, no change. Okay. Tap, do do. Okay, cool. Back to the other one. Let's 
somehow the party verb got turned on. We'll turn it off. There we go. Save, save, save. <laughs> See that? So I had the JRC on during the crunch sound, and then it stayed on when I went to my clean. So But now that's off, I go to my dry or my dirt sound. I don't know guys, that sounds pretty good to me. Say for example, we don't push the mids as much on the EQ. Maybe some lows like that. Checking this S1 drive here. Let's turn the drive back down. All just fun sounds you can do with the Fender Twin. <sighs> no problem, Steve. You can check out. Uh, you can check it out later. Um, I would say the tuner has a tolerance to it, so as long as you know, middle-ish, then you're good. But it's never going to be perfectly in the middle. It's, it's always going to lean one way or the other. But there is like a, there's a tolerance there. So I, I really wouldn't worry about it. If you tune, and you play a chord, and it's sounding, this is what I mean, listen. Right, I mean, I tuned, and it sounds good, so... Uh, your mileage may vary. But yeah, Steve, thanks for, uh, thanks for checking it out or hanging out here. Uh, one thing I noticed about my gig board, I got a pawn shop, which will be taken back shortly, is that the foot switches work and sometimes they don't. Uh, yeah. That could happen. Depending on the person who had it before and how rough they were with it. I think it sounds good. It's, not, it's got a big sound to it. I'm actually going to lower the gain on this just about 10%. Kind of clean it up a little bit. Save that as the preset. Okay. 
Okay, that vibrato there is really cool to bring in on a switch. So we'll, on, a, on the core, we can do a bank A and a bank B. So if I hold this down, it switches over to the other side. And then we go into hardware assign. And I will tell it to, uh, instead of this cab, this is going to be amp 2 of uh, vibrato. Now it makes more sense to do that if you have a single amp. Uh, Cause if you want a vibrato on the clean and the crunch, you'd have to have us have it on uh, two different switches, but <clears throat> You could just add a, uh, a tremolo uh, in the chain. Uh, where am I at here? Tremolo. Uh, we'll try this one. Ooh, this is a stereo one. Set the phase a little bit here. I hear it in my ears going back and forth in the stereo field. You should be able to hear the same thing if you're listening on headphones or studio monitors. That was glorious. Let's do some math real fast, shall we? So if you can have two scenes per switch and there's five switches on each row, okay, that's 10 on one bank and then 10 more on the other bank. That makes a total of 20 scenes that you could access on the core, which I think is really cool. Um, same goes for the prime it has eight switches. Eight times two is 16. Wait, am I doing that right? <laughs> no. What am I doing here? Uh, there should be a total of, what, 32 scenes? Am I doing that right? I don't even know. I don't even know anymore. Uh, yeah, it's something like that. It's, it's, it's a high account. It's a high count of scenes you can have on the on the on the head rush unit. over turn off my uh... ah I see what I gotta do I need to go here uh, let's reassign this to the tremolo sound hello tremolo on. Bam, here we are. All right, now on the core and the prime, we do have a CPU usage um, readout up there, which I'm about 50% right now. What up, 
Francis. Francis is in the house. Um, I'm supposed to get one more Kiesel in for the year. Because I ordered four back in December. And um, they were all coming in at once. So uh, FedEx said it was supposed to be here today. It was not here today. So therefore, I'll go pick it up tomorrow. And um, it'll be cool. It's kind of like a Les Paul thing. Um, it's a single cut guitar with big block inlays, um, you know, gold hardware, all the cool things in there. But I will be sure and do a cool video on it very soon. Uh, we've been going for about an hour now and uh, having some fun. I'll, I'll go for a few more minutes and then we'll shut it down. Uh, this is the, uh, the March HTS rigs, which is a makeup from last month because I was so busy watching basketball. I didn't do a live stream. So, uh, this will be the live stream for March. And then next week I will do a, another live stream for the month of April and we'll do a different topic talking about, uh, something else. So, I do want to show you something really cool here. Let's, uh, let's make a new rig. Let's do a reviver thing this time. And I really like the, uh, the valve King stuff. This thing just rips. It rips a new one, man. Uh, let's see what we can do here. We have a, uh, let's try this. Okay, we got some natural reverb on the amp here. Let's take that down. Okay, let's check out the cab sound. too fond of that let's go pick something different let's do the uh head rush cab we'll do a 30 watt <laughs> now that definitely has a more scoopier sound to it scoopier is it is a word folks <laughs> Okay, there's that versus let's bring in one of my IRs just to give you a little taste of what it can do. Um, we're going to load an IR. We're going to go to user, Doc McFarland, IRs. And we'll bring in the same Venice 30 cab here. We'll do a, a B, B, A. <laughs> Okay, something like that. Uh, we'll bypass that. We'll turn this one back on. And we'll make it the uh, the Vintage 30 again. Uh, so here's a Vintage 30. Um, let's make it the same. Scoopy kind of sound. <laughs> Uh, so this has less bright or less high end to it. Um, both are cool though. Just depends on what you want for the mix. Very scoopy. Even though every one of them I see, I like, I like, yeah. Um, well, if you're going to be in the market for like a Les Paul, 
which is probably in that $2,000, $2,500 range. Um, there's Kiesels that start off around the $1,500, $1,700 range. And then once you add the custom features that can get into the $2,500, $3,000 area. Um, but that's really only if you really are stupid and not good with money and just want a custom guitar for the for the, for uh, the fun of it, you know. Um, otherwise, you just go out and buy a Fender or a, an Epiphone or something and be fine with that. But uh, then you got to be able to play as well. Anyway, what am I doing here? I am. I'm going to try an IR. I'm just kind of demo, demoing some stuff. So. <laughs> Um, what I wanted to do is turn the gain down. Let's go to a different model. The uh, the triple rec. There's one of these that sounded better than. Let's try it out. Just a little bit closer. Uh, here's the angle stuff. Uh, which one do I like? I was really liking the, uh, the 3120. And then there's also the 6505. Though something is not perking my ear like it was uh, the other night. Let me try a different IR. Um. Okay, something like that. Um, can't see where I'm clicking. Then we'll add some delay, some dying delay. some dirt before it something like that <laughs> okay and then we can add those to a switch which they already are let me go to this other one here bring that up bring that up this one's over here. I really don't know why this always defaults to yellow. That doesn't make sense at all. So, for example, you can have a 6505 and then turn that off and then bring in the Fender Twin again. And notice when I did that, the revolver was grayed out which means you can't add another Reviver amp. Um, actually, I think you can only add one Reviver amp to, uh, to a preset, um, which means you can go in and add a Black Duo, for example. And then we'll go to our preset down here. Uh, clean. <laughs> Now 
at this point, we can go to hardware assign. We can go over here and we can change this to a scene. So scene one is gonna be our clean amp and the revolver is gonna be off. IR is gonna be on, delay is gonna stay on, this one's gonna be off. And then my second one, um, they've made it to where when you choose the second state, that the what was off is now on, what was on was now off. So it basically just switches for you, uh, which is good some of the time. Which is good some of the time. I'm not going to bring in the JRC right now. I'll actually muck it no chain. No, I'm going to have it off. Okay, this one is going to be blue. This one's going to be red. And uh, we'll go ahead and save it. Uh, doc. Doc Duo. <laughs> We're going to have to turn up this amp here. Post gain, maybe. I do like the 6505 amplifier. It, it makes me really want to have a real one because it'd be fun. <laughs> Okay, that was fun. I uh, just picked up one of the new SECE PRS guitars. Yeah, those look good. Those look like good guitars. Uh, I had a CE24 that I got on a trade, and then I sold it because I really didn't. I really wanted. I really wanted cash for what I was trading for before. And I didn't get that, so I just figured, hey. I will uh, I will trade up and then sell it for cash and that's what I did. Yeah, those five nine four guitars look really good. I like I like them a lot. We've been going for about an hour and 18 minutes. I'm trying to keep it to about an hour. Uh, I feel like when I go more than that, um, I just kind of, they just kind of go on forever and, you know, no one's going to watch past that point. So anyway, and there's only two people watching. So those people who are watching, you are winners and thanks for your support. And uh, I will have this rig, the twin rig uploaded um, wherever it's at, this one, the, uh, the black, the, the big twin clean pedals, March HTS rig. So that'll be the, the rig for March. And then, uh, next week I'll do something cooler with some more rigs and stuff, but <laughs> I like the fact that you can switch between a, a clean twin and a cranked twin. <laughs> You could go in and switch out the, the spring reverb for a plate or a room or a hall or anything else if you don't like the spring reverb. I feel that's a good overall rig just to play pretty much anything. Then you got the S1 drive for some slightly different variation on the dirt and also a tube screamer. So 
is all options for uh, jamming with friends or riding in the studio or whatever you want. So, oh man, I am tired. I am tired. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe down below. Click the uh, check out the description for the uh, website for Greg Barth's uh, Sonic DNA Doc McFarland IR pack. They, it is on sale right now. I think 60% off or 60 something. I don't know, whatever it is. And um, so that's a good deal. Get that while you can. And then. Uh, check out the affiliate links to Amazon, Zounds, and Sweetwater. So wherever you prefer to shop, uh, those are your options there. And uh, anything you buy through those links, I get a small commission. And anything, everything goes to help support the channel. And allow me to review more things and do other cool stuff. So thanks guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Keep rocking.